Okay. So welcome everybody. Uh, it is a pleasure and an honor for us to have with us uh, Professor Manolis Floratos, uh, who has actually recently been announced also as academician at the Academy of Athens in mathematical physics in the chair of mathematical physics. Most of you in the audience and uh, from the names I will see where you are aware of uh, his career. Just let me mention that he has been professor at uh, the University of Crete and in Athens, at the University of Athens. Uh, now he is a professor emeritus at uh, the University of Athens. He has been uh, uh, director of the Institute of Nuclear Physics in Democritus and later also as uh, president of the governing council. And uh, among his many uh, research interests, let me mention the field theory, strings, uh, quantum gravity, quantum mechanics and quantum computing, uh, quantization of uh, chaotic systems, uh, quantum information, many others. Today, uh, the talk, uh, let me bring it uh, to the... Uh, so uh, from the beginning, uh, we are start ready to start. Okay, so the talk is about uh, chaotic lattice. Arnold Katz, I have seen the title before, <laughs> but it's chaotic yeah, yeah. lattice theory. The, the, the paper. Okay, so we can start. Ora. Ora. First, I would like to thank you for the kind invitation to present my recent work. Uh, and this uh, work has been uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, Minos Axenidis from the Institute of Nuclear F and Particle Physics in Democritus, and Stam Nicholas from the University for the Mathematics Department of the, Math of the, Insti of, uh, the University of Tours in France. Uh, this is a, a work in a long uh, uh, series of uh, papers uh, which deal with uh, 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 chaos in uh, a discrete uh, uh, dynamical systems. I will uh, present the, ma ma the main motivation later. And uh, chaotic lattice field theories, this is the title of the talk, and there is a recent paper. This which has been published, has been accepted uh, last month in uh, Physical Review E. Okay, so the plan of the presentation goes as follows. Uh, first, I will explain what is the problem and the motivation to, to deal with this problem. Uh, then I will present a brief introduction of the chaotic lattice field theories. Uh, this is a subject which in, in more generally is known as chaotic field theories. Uh, then I will constrain, uh, I will constrain this uh, system of theories in some very particular uh, dynamical systems which they have uh, toroidal phase space, that is, the positions and the momenta uh, belong to, to a compact toroidal phase space, that is, you, 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 the, the phase space is a box uh, to, to n dimensions for n degrees of freedom, which is periodic in space and in momentum. Uh, then the, um, the, the, the dynamics on these uh, toroidal phase spaces is uh, described in our work by linear hyperbolic symplectic maps. I will explain what is that and why that, because all these maps 
these are matrices basically which are uh, uh, have properties uh, which are ergodicity chaoticity that is you have uh, uh, Lyapunov exponents positive Lyapunov exponents and you have also uh, strong mixing properties now how we how we proceed uh, to construct this these field theories uh, we use a, a technical trick which uh, took several years to to to, to find out and this uh, you, you 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 use many Fibonacci sequences and you try to couple them in a systematic way and uh, for particular uh, Fibonacci sequences for particular values of some parameters, uh, you obtain uh, Arnold cut maps in every side of this uh, lattice. And it, it is easy to do it in one and two dimensions and also in higher dimensions. But we will deal only with one dimensional uh, 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 dynamical system which the phase space is two dimensional. And since it is toroidal, then this one dimensional is a circle. So it is a discrete set of points with, with periodic boundary conditions. Now, uh, why this is interesting? This is interesting because it is uh, among the very, very few dynamical systems for which we can calculate explicitly, analytically, the Lyapunov spectra, the case and the Kolmogorov Sinai entropy, all the periodic orbits and, and the periods of the periodic orbits. And it is also possible to, to compute the mixing times. So we'll define what is the mixing time. Okay. Uh, usually, uh, field theories are uh, understood to be systems of uh, many degrees of freedom or infinite degrees of freedom, uh, uh, each one of which is an harmonic oscillator. And they are coupled together at different sides of the, of the spe of space. Um, now, harmonic oscillators are stable uh, systems, uh, but uh, coupling them uh, with neighbor, uh, um, other neighbor uh, oscillators, you can obtain, depending on the, on the kind of coupling, um, you, it is easy to obtain uh, chaotic systems, but it's very difficult to, to study in general chaotic systems for the chaotic properties for infinite number of degrees of freedom, which are supposed to be the, the field theories. So we constrain the finite number of points in space or in finite space, in, in, in phase space. And uh, we have finite degrees of number of degrees of freedom. But each degree of freedom here is not an harmonic oscillator, it's a chaotic dynamical system. So you have many chaotic dynamical systems and you couple them. Um, now, people have, uh, uh, have tried um, to study this um, the coupling of different dynamical systems with chaotic properties. And they are, um, they are known by the name of couple map lattices. And the maps are the discrete evolution, discrete evolution time for each degree of freedom. Uh, now, the, these systems uh, uh, are studied because we, we, we have reasons to find new dynamical systems, new many body dynamical systems, uh, which are composed out of chaotic units. So the uh, the chaotic properties of this uh, many body system is very strong. Uh, for example, these systems are supposed to have faster thermalization properties and faster mixing uh, of information, if you like, information um, are values of the variance, okay, are, are um, uh, localized on the, on, the, on the variables of the system. Uh, discrete uh, on this, this discrete system. And this information, if it is localized in the beginning, uh, some, uh, in some moment of time, t equals zero, then uh, there is a fast delocalization. Now, the faster thermal, and then you go as go, time goes to infinity, you go to a uniform distribution. Okay? Now, this is, this is what we call thermalization. This, uh, uh, this is not a statistical thermodynamic or statistical mechanic system which has finite temperature. Uh, 
uh, because everything is described by Hamiltonian mechanics, so the temperature is zero. Okay? We don't have uh, temperature here, although one may uh, define some effective temperature. Now, um, why why we we are interested in these uh, systems? Uh, this system started uh, to be studied by Kaneko in 1984, and they wanted to see how the chaotic behavior of extended in, in space uh, systems uh, uh, are organized in some universality classes of chaotic behavior. Um, so, uh, for example, there is a very nice uh, review by Crutchfield and Kaneko in 1987, where they studied in uh, uh, all these universality classes. And uh, what happens is, according to the values of several parameters of the systems, you may have organized uh, configurations. Uh, you, uh, for example, you may have uh, patterns, organized patterns in space. And for other values of the parameters, you have completely chaotic behavior. And it is interesting to see how you go from the organized. Uh, so you have a kind of uh, uh, critical behavior of self-organization. That is, there is a, some critical values for the parameters where, where the, from chaotic uh, behavior, you go into some organized behavior. Now, uh, uh, the, this has been, uh, uh, they, have, they have been used uh, for the, they have been used for the, uh, for, for some organized states of the systems, which are called chimera states. These are supposed to be states of uh, organized uh, neuronal networks. Uh, that uh, they, they appear uh, as follows. Some part of the system is uh, chaotic and some other part of the system is very well organized and makes some uh, oscillations, for example, okay? Um, now, this, this, uh, this idea of uh, spatiotemporal chaos and universality classes uh, has been uh, the focus of uh, applications for the localization and random materials. That is, you have materials where you expect that there is a random dynamical behavior of the, of the units of the material. But on the other hand, there are some uh, parameters uh, which take values, specific values, and then you get localization. You can't, so, so this is, for example, a transition between insulator and non-insulator states in, in, in uh, random materials. And this is very important. Now also for memory effects, that is you have a kind of hysteresis cy cycles in the recovery, the initial state. And uh, due to all these pro uh, properties, uh, they have been used as models for cognitive processes. Now on the other hand, uh, we started from a completely different uh, point because we were studying uh, several years ago, uh, um, um, some exotic objects in, uh, in gravity and quantum gravity, which are called black holes. Now, black holes are space-time regions where the, the light cannot escape. Uh, and uh, these are classical solutions of the Einstein equations. And although Einstein did not believe in them, they were found uh, astronomical objects uh, very, very, very far and uh, very big. Uh, astronomical system with millions of suns, which are, uh, which are black holes. And not only that, they found the gravitational waves through the collision of two uh, massive black holes in the universe. And this uh, um, was, a, uh, was responsible for the Nobel uh, Prizes, which they were awarded the last uh, two, two Nobel Prizes for this uh, for this discovery of gravitational waves through the, one was the gravitational waves and the other is the discovery of a huge black hole in the center of the of, the, of our galaxy. Okay, now the, in, in theoretical physics, uh, the last, uh, I would say uh, almost uh, 100 years since the beginning of the, of the quantum mechanics, 
many people thought how it is possible to uh, quantize gravity. And uh, unfortunately, until today, the, the quantization of gravity still remains uh, unsolved as a problem, although there are theories which are the, the string theories which are supposed to be uh, perturbative, uh, unitary, Lorentz invariant, you get sensible and finite mathematical results, results and uh, in low, very low energies, this, uh, these string theories uh, are described by gravitational theories, not the gravitational theory of Einstein, unfortunately. Some more exotic super, super gravities, etc. But they cannot really uh, uh, explain what happens when gravity becomes strong. And uh, at least uh, regions where gravity becomes strong, then the, all, the, all the system of the, of the theoretical tools that they have been developed for string theories breaks down. Okay, so string theory cannot describe very strong gravitational. For example, what happens to the, to the center of the black hole, which you have singularity, the classical Einstein theory, and you cannot understand what is going on there quantum mechanically. On the other hand, the, uh, the, the, uh, the study of the black hole discovered in the last 15 years that the, uh, near the horizon of the black hole happened very interesting. Phenomena. And uh, among this, I will not go into this direction because it will take a lot of time to explain. Um, it appears that for an external observer, which is far from the black hole, uh, the black hole appears to, 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 uh, to be a system of, degree, of chaotic degrees of freedom, which for the external observer are localized near the horizon, very, very thin uh, spherical cell near the horizon. For example, the, the entropy of the black hole is proportional as the Bekenstein Hawking uh, found um, is, is described by the area of the black hole. So it is not described by the volume, which is the usual uh, behavior for a thermodynamical, normal thermodynamical system. So uh, all the degrees of freedom are supposed to uh, be distributed a, a, a around the horizon. And uh, their behavior must be described by strongly chaotic dynamical systems. So, Theoretical physicists trying to understand what is going on with quantum mechanics in black hole, they, they have been concentrating their efforts on the dynamics of this effective or fictitious degrees of freedom near the horizon. So they are uh, after the construction of new field theories, which they have very strong uh, chaotic properties, much stronger than any known. Uh, field theory that we know. But the, the field theories we know usually are local field theories. Local means that you have couplings only between the neighbors or next to neighbors. And also that the because the light uh, has a finite uh, maximum velocity speed, then it is uh, impossible to, to go out of the of the black hole. So information cannot escape. So if you fall if if, if you send a uh, wave packet with information, whatever you may think, a book, for example, uh, in, in the interior of the black hole, you lose information. And uh, now the resolution which people who have tried to, to solve this kind of problem uh, is um, that the, all the information does not disappear, but uh, is uh, distributed on the horizon, on the dynamical degrees of freedom, on the, on the horizon of the black hole. And uh, how, they, how, how this, um, this information distributed in the horizon of the black hole, if you have a Gaussian, say, wave packet and goes into some region of the uh, horizon of the black hole, then what happens is that this uh, uh, wave packet is uh, um, infused extremely fast around the black hole. And so you have a, a uniform distribution of the information. Now, to be consistent with causality, with quantum mechanics, and with general relativity, uh, it has been found that the, the, the speed by which uh, this distribution 
initial distribution must be thermalized is unbelievably fast. And the time um, which is unique is called the scrambling time and is proportional to the logarithm of the entropy of the system. Now the user to understand, I mean, why this is, uh, this is fast time is the usual distribution, the usual diffusion of uh, materials or in any field theory, yeah? any material we know, any field theory we know, usually is a fractional power of the, of the usually is bigger than one, the fractional power. But the scrambling time is proportional to some fractional power of the entropy. So this is log s, and, uh, and if the entropy is huge, as it is for black holes, you understand that this time is extremely short. We don't have for the moment uh, some uh, realistic theory of degrees of freedom for which this scrambling time information is, is, uh, is of, this, uh, of this magnitude. So people try to, under, to, to construct new field theories. In this direction, so we started to study the chaotic field theories and with very, very extremely simple model with the hope that uh, maybe we find thermalization effects which are extremely fast are close to this scrambling time if we make as, as chaotic as possible uh, this uh, um, field theories, okay? So to obtain the fastest possible thermalization, we, we expect that the chaotic units of the uh, system must be uh, maximally chaotic, each one of these, and mixing. Mixing uh, means that in the phase space of one degree of freedom, which is two dimensional, I mean, if you have a, an initial distribution localized in this phase space, it will, with the dynamics of the one degree of freedom, it will spread fast, as, as, as fast as possible, in the, it will become uniform. Okay, so the, there is a phenomenon of mixing. So we look for, for, for units which have this property to be maximal chaotic and mixing. And, uh, and to be such um, natural these units that we can handle in some analytic way. Otherwise, I mean, one has to do very long uh, numerical experiments, which for many degrees of freedom, which is very difficult. So now I will pass with the handwritten notes. Now, one, one, one dynamical system which is, uh, which is extremely fast and is exponentially fast is the system of Fibonacci in the just how fast they grow. Okay, Fibonacci was uh, Leonardo Piz uh, Pisano, who was born in the 12th century. And he introduced, he introduced the, the, the Indo-Arabic uh, system of uh, arithmetic in, the, in, in Europe. And from this time on, we use this, uh, this system of, uh, of numbers, but he produced a lot of interesting uh, mathematical results. Among this is the, the, the famous series of Bonacci integers. You start with an integer F0, which is zero, and F1 is one. And uh, each one of the, of the following integers is just the sum of the previous two, okay? And grows very fast exponentially. Also, you can construct with small rectangles, okay? You can construct the spiral, Fibonacci spiral, which is observed in nature, in the flowers, etc. So it has application in, in morphogenesis, in biology. Now, another interesting uh, property identity he found, uh, but was known also to some Indian mathematician uh, five centuries before Fibonacci, is that if you multiply the sum of squares a plus square plus b square times c square plus d square, this can be written a c minus b d square plus a d. This was known also to, to, the, to the ancient uh, mathematicians, to Greek mathematicians. And uh, this is nothing else than the um, is that the, the norm of a complex number, x plus i, y, which is square plus y square. Uh, if you take two complex numbers, z, z, uh, zeta one and zeta two, then the norm of the product is the product of the norms. And then this, you can write, this is, so somehow Gauss, when he invented an Euler, the, the complex numbers, they, 
they were using this identity to, to, to find the properties of the complex number. So it was very interesting um, mathematical uh, um, discovery. <clears throat> now the simplest uh, chaotic unit, which we take because of, uh, of the, all the results we know about chaos, uh, chaotic dynamical systems can be simulated by this simple uh, uh, hyperbolic map. So you take a phase space, which is a, a box on the Euclidean plane from zero to one and zero to one. Okay? You impose periodic conditions, and then you apply to any point inside this, uh, this torus, you, you apply the map one, 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 two. And this is called the Arnold cut map. And you do it as follows. You take uh, the coordinate uh, position momentum at time uh, uh, n. You multiply from the right because I uh, I use row vectors and not column. Okay. And since you have integers and Q and P may be rational numbers, okay, then you obtain coordinates which may be outside the torus. Okay. So you have to take then for each new coordinate you have to take uh, the, only the decimal apart, which is taken by taking the mod one operation. Now, this is very simple because you iterate this linear recursion relation and you find that the, at the nth time, you know what is uh, the, 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 the point of the phase space you, you have arrived. And uh, what is, okay, this is for any matrix, but what is interesting especially for this matrix is that uh, uh, it's possible to obtain the nth power for any n, and these are given the matrix elements of the nth power are the Fibonacci sequence, which we know explicitly what they are. So you know analytically beforehand the evolution in time for any point. Now it is possible to solve this uh, recursion relation. You say that you have uh, fn is proportional to some variable rho, and then you since it is a linear the relation, you can solve this equation. You find that Fibonacci numbers are uh, powers and powers of these uh, special fractions. And um, this is nothing else. The, the plus one is the golden ratio. If you take the ratio of Fn plus one over Fn, this relation, you take Fn plus one over Fn, then uh, you, you are left with rho, rho plus uh, when the time goes to infinity. So the ratio of Fibonacci numbers goes to the golden ratio. Now the golden ratio is an irrational number, and this is the best approximation now for uh, irrational numbers. Okay, so it has very interesting number theoretic properties. Now what happens is that this rho plus and rho minus Rho plus is bigger than one, rho minus is smaller than one. So the dynamical behavior of the system is that you take uh, uh, one small rectangle inside the, the, the phase space, and then uh, you, when you act with the Aron cut map, then you have expansion along the eigenvectors of rho plus and contraction uh, uh, along the, eigenva the eigenvector of rho minus. So you have expansion and contraction, and then this creates chaos. And um, uh, this is exponentially faster here. So these are called the Yakuza exponents, is like in the uh, western of like the of the time of the world. Now the, the map belongs to a group, which are the two by two matrices with integer elements, but with, uh, with the terminal one. Okay, this is called the symplectic group, uh, two dimensional phase space. Okay. Now, why this is interesting? Because if you look at the uh, Hamiltonian systems, which are described by evolution of Hamiltonian, you look at the Hamilton equations in position and momentum, and you integrate any dynamic, any, any Hamiltonian dynamical system, the, the evolution in time will be described by elements of this group. Okay, SP2R, the general Hamiltonian. Now here, because the time is discrete, the space is discrete, you cannot have sp2r, you must have sp2z. Okay, so there is no Hamiltonian, but there is the exponential of the Hamiltonian. Okay? 
Now, another critical uh, observation, which uh, was the reason that Arnold introduced this map, is that uh, if you try to find <clears throat> what are the periodic orbits, you start from a point inside the, inside the phase space, uh, inside the toroidal phase space, and you act with a, with a map. You may, if, if, uh, if the coordinates of this point are irrational, well, one or the other, or both, okay, then you see that you never find a periodic orbit. It is easy because you can never um, go back, no power. Um, if you take the decimal play, the decimal part of the new coordinates, mod one, okay, you will never go back to the, to the initial point. Now, on the other hand, if you start with a rational point, that is both the, the, the coordinates in phase space are uh, rationals with say the common denominator, okay? Then uh, it is easy to see that after some iterations, uh, because this is indeterminate, these are integers, it is possible to come back because otherwise the number of, of these fractions uh, would be infinite. And the fractions inside the torus will find with, uh, con with constant um, denominator are. Fine, right? Uh, how many points with constant denominator n are uh, n square? So if you apply a, a times a times a times a, you will go in all the time between these n square points, and the period is smaller than n square. Uh, for uh, the smallest possible period is uh, log n when n is Fibonacci number, and in the other case uh, uh, is proportional to n the period. But as the period increases. You have, as the n increases, so you have uh, more and more and more points inside the, this phase space. Uh, the periods are, are random variables, are random functions of n. Okay? The, there is no regularity in the behavior of the. This is important because the the, the, the periods play uh, play a big role. Uh, later for the semi-classical quantization or to, to, if you want to quantize the system, and this corresponds to the energies. The periods correspond to the energies of the quantized system. Okay, now, apart from the, from this, uh, so the, the, because of this property that if you have only rational point, you have periodic orbit, and if you move a little out of the of rational point, you have, uh, you don't have periodic orbits, then uh, the, the space is compact, phase space is compact, so you fill up all the space so that the system is ergodic. So this way you prove that this map is ergodic. Okay. But also it is mixing. Now the mixing is another story. Any ergodic system is not mixing, as very well you know. But the opposite is true. If you take two regions in the phase space, in the toroidal phase space, A and B, which are, say, connected and uh, have a finite uh, area, okay. Um, and then you try to find the intersection of these two sets. And you take the first set and you apply the map. So you deform A with a map, the carbon cut map, it goes here and there, but you don't deform this. Then it is uh, easy to see that uh, as n goes to infinity, uh, essentially you get the product of the, of the area of A times the area of B. In order to understand this is uh, you have to divide uh, the following. If you say uh, uh, the area of A is mu of A, is some measure, okay? and the area of B is mu of B. Now, if, if, the, if inside the, in the torus you, you have, say, uh, water is filled with water and you have a, a, a drop of ink in this area A, then the ink will diffuse with the dynamic of the system, but the proportionality, the density of the initial, the initial drop will be the area of the drop divided by one, for the phase phase is one. Okay. Now, what it says here is that the, 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 the intersection of this of this evolution will be divided by this will be the same. Uh, so the initial, uh, so as n goes to infinity means that the 
uniform uh, density that we will obtain at the end is equal to the density. This is the definition of the going to uniform um, densities. Okay. Now, this is not enough uh, because uh, no only the, that you have mixing, this is called strong mixing, uh, you need also to know how fast you approach because the difference of this measure with that measure may be one over n, or some power of time, one over n squares. Okay. But uh, for this system, we have exponentially fast mixing. And this uh, lambda is, um, is called the mixing time because n is the time. Okay, so this, the mixing time is one over lambda. One over lambda. Now it happens that the mixing time is exactly the Yapunov exponent. So uh, the, if you know the Yapunov exponent, you know also how fast you mix the system. Okay, these are basic uh, results of the. Now, uh, how much time I have? Okay. Yes. Now, um, so I will I will make now the so this this seminar will be mainly the construction of this uh, of this field theories. Okay, I will not have application of the construction to the problem we are interested in later because already this was a, a very interesting problem and. Uh, it was known. It was not known in the literature. How do you couple many such maps? Okay, yes, it seems uh, very simple, but it is uh, it is not simple because you have to have some imagination and how you do it. Because it is not you have a Hamiltonian and then you add some interaction term. You don't have here a Hamiltonian. You have an evolution for a unit of time, all the phase space. Okay? We don't know that from a priori. Uh, uh, how to add uh, interaction terms between two sets. Okay, the idea, uh, which is the, I will explain this idea and then we will stop, <coughs> is the following. You take two, for example, Fibonacci sequences, which are exactly the same Fibonacci sequences. Say. Mm -hmm. You start with two Fibonacci sequences, which are, you have two copies of Fibonacci sequence. And now you, you, you introduce um, some interaction between them. But there are an infinite number of ways to produce interactions. We choose the simplest one, which is linear interactions. That is, we mix one with another, not adding uh, powers of, um, of the second, for the gm squared. Okay? So fn plus one will be fn plus fn minus one if it is one to one add. But now, since it is two, we don't know the coefficient here. It is fn, fn minus one plus gm. Plus G and minus one. Okay, are, are known integers. Now we do the same thing for the second Bonacci, which is uh, uh, simply you change F and G, but the integers here will be different. Okay, now we do the following thing, which uh, is how you represent the evolution of the Fibonacci um, numbers with matrices. You, it is known how you do it for one Fibonacci sequence, and then you obtain the Arnold map. Okay, that's why the Arnold map has power, which are the Fibonacci. I mean, this, this, this was essentially the idea. So we write this system of equations in matrix form, but we write in a very particular way. We write here n minus one, uh, n minus one, n and n, and here we write n and n, n plus one, n plus one. This is similar with what you do when you have one Fibonacci sequence. You write Fn minus one Fn, how it goes to Fn, Fn, Fn minus one Fn plus one. Okay. And then you obtain a matrix, and this matrix in the Fibonacci case is zero, one, uh, one, one. Okay. Here, because you see the ones why they appear. First of all, um, Fn, appears here, but also here. Okay? So here must be zero. Zero, 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 and one. So the, because the cannot be anything else. The same happens for GN. So you have here also one. And here you write down these indexes, how they are appear in this um, evolution equation. Okay? So you separate. Now, if, if you look, this is because, for example, uh, Fn plus one will be 
B1 times F n minus one plus B1 Zn minus one plus A1 F n plus C1 Zn. Okay. So you write the, the this equation in math form and you separate this two into blocks which are two by two matrices. So you call these matrices P and C. This is one. So now all these complications disappear here. And you have this simple equation zero identity matrix two by two, okay. and a non matrix V and a non matrix and C two by two of integers. Now what we're going to do. We want to obtain some uh, evolution matrix finally on the phase space, which will be symplectic, but symplectic not of the group SP2, but SP4. Okay. How you do that and what is what is that? Uh, symplectic is the, all the matrix which if you multiply on the left. And this is a symplectic matrix in four by four. In two by two is minus one plus one. This matrix is preserved, but if you if you multiply on the left by uh, some elements of the selective group, the transport, and on the right, it must be remain the same. This means that we preserve we preserve this selective uh, with evolution. We preserve this selective form. This is the definition of the selective group. Now, if you do that, then you require that this matrix will give you. Minus J, well, we just flip the sign of the J. Then, from this equation alone, you obtain that D is identity matrix and C must be asymmetric in the Z matrix. So, our matrix lambda for the evolution is 0, I, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, and C asymmetric matrix. Now, if this matrix is uh, changes the sign of J, a square of this matrix, if you do it twice, that is lambda plus four square and lambda square, minus times minus plus. So with the square, you, you will obtain an element which preserves J, and this will be an element of SP4 J. It seems quite arbitrary, but indeed it is arbitrary. But in this way, what we do? This way, what we succeed? We succeed the following thing. Since this is symmetric matrix, and this is this is not a lambda is not a So the eigenvalues are real. The square are positive uh, or zero or positive. So this matrix is a matrix and it has eigenvalues positive or zero. So it's hyperbolic matrix. And if it is it does not have zero eigenvalues, it has only uh, positive eigenvalues. Now, because it is symplectic, if it has the eigenvalue lambda, then it will have the eigenvalue also one over lambda. So you have coin. If it is lambda bigger than one, okay, then one over lambda could be smaller than one. So you have directions in the phase pair which are contracting and directions which are expanding. So in this, with this trick, you obtain uh, some uh, class of hyperbolic matrices uh, which uh, generalize the Fibonacci sequence. Now, the interesting thing is that if you do this matrix, if you take this matrix and you take the square, the nth power of this, uh, then here appear uh, not the Fibonacci numbers, but the Fibonacci polynomials. Fibonacci polynomials are polynomials which fn plus one x is x here. And it's a mistake, right? x x fn x plus fn minus one x. So you generate polynomial, uh, polynomials which are called Fibonacci polynomials and have many properties which are common with Fibonacci numbers. And there is a whole mathematical uh, literature about this Fibonacci polynomials. Now here, we have, uh, because uh, only the matrix C appears, don't have commutativity problems, don't have two different matrices, they only one matrix. So you generalize and then it's the Fibonacci polynomials here, and the argument is not a, a real number, see, but it's a matrix. So you know the you know the coordinates of any point for any time. And also, uh, uh, if you impose periodic conditions, we have done for the for toroidal phase space, then you you must calculate the, the evolution of the 
lambda on the point of the phase space modulo one because the toroidal phase space is uh, is uh, just a length one in, in, in its dimension. So if you take mod one, you have your dynamical system. Now we'll go further because we want to couple. Now we want to couple one Fibonacci one, one, one Fibonacci sequence, one cut map with the next one, with the next one, with the next one, along the circle, say, okay, with periodic conditions. But the coupling between one, one and the other, we want to be uh, the same. The same, the first with the second, the second with the third, the third with the fourth, etc. Now, if you do that, then the C cannot be arbitrary matrix because C is a symmetric matrix. But if you if you want to have translation invariance couplings, the same coupling in every place in space, okay, then you need to C must be diagonal matrix with arbitrary integers plus the first uh, upper diagonal and the lower diagonal with an integer here G. So you, you are restricting very much this matrix C to be K diagonal and G in the upper and lower diagonal. Now this matrix, because of the periodic conditions, here in one also here. Or the transport here in one here, because we copy the last one with the first one. So we found this uh, this two parameter family, and then we uh, we can work out now how you do how you how you do that now because C now is simple is a G and P and P transpose the matrix P is diagonalized by Fourier transform because it's a translation matrix you know, Fourier transform plus transpose is Exponential plus the conjugate exponential, you obtain cosines. Okay, so the eigenvalues of this matrix C okay, is dj is k plus two, and here are the couplings uh, one to l, which is in, in general would be uh, different, but we take this to be the same. So we have g outside, we have a sum here. Now, how you obtain from the eigenvalues of the matrix C, the eigenvalues of the matrix M, M which is 1, C, C, 1 plus C squared. And this is an easy algebraic problem. You do it and you find it upon the component explicit. Uh, then you have positive and negative, one big, or some of them are bigger than one, some of them are smaller than one, some of them may be zero. And then the Kolmogorov scenario appears this. So it is possible to calculate this explicitly. And what we find is that uh, uh, the Kolmogorov Sinai entropy is linearly rising with the number of degrees of freedom. Um, the slope of the of the uh, of the Kolmogorov Sinai entropy is a increasing function of the range for fixed coupling constant and increasing function of the coupling constant for fixed range. Uh, so we may uh, tune the mixing property uh, if we want um, uh, to have strong mixing, you must have uh, a very small mixing time. Now it comes out, we have another work which is finished, which is uh, the mixing time, which was how fast you approach the mixing uh, identity. I showed you the beginning. Uh, the mixing time is uh, equal exactly to, to the inverse one over the Kolmogorov Sinai entropy. Okay, so if you have a very uh, big Kolmogorov Sinai entropy, then you have a very short mix of time. Now, how fast is with respect to fast scrambling? We must calculate the entropy of the system. Now, the entropy of the system is not the Kolmogorov Sinai entropy. Okay, the entropy is the thermodynamic entropy. So we must take averages for kinetic energies of the system, etc. And this is a very long calculation. So we have not connected yet the, 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 the mixing time with the scrambling time. This is uh, remains an uh, open question. Now the Kolmogorov. Uh, um, so you see here, for example, a system with hundred particles. Okay, you calculate, uh, you plot 
uh, with a mod number because of Fourier, you have uh, the, eigen, the eigenvectors of the evolution matrix are organized according to the mod number, okay, which is essentially the wavelength in phase space. It's, uh, so wavelength from one to hundred. And then you plot the, the eigenvalues. Then you increase or decrease the carbon if you, if you increase the carbon. This constant is this, and uh, lower carbon is this. So you see that you can go usually, uh, usually, uh, the exponents are small in the Atlanta system. This is zero something, zero point something, one point something, maximum two is very difficult to obtain. Here you can obtain it. In um, of course, it's a uh, case very simple system. And then you have also, um, if you want to see the spectrum, that is from the biggest lacuna to the smallest lacuna exponent. So you make uh, and shorter lacuna exponents because it was uh, the plot according to the, to the more number. Here it is according to the size of the lacuna. So you see that you have. Uh, Spectrum uh, which goes like an S. S, that is a repeat like that. And this is general for all of them. This is for increasing, constant, and dec decreasing, constant, and increasing. And then these are the Kolmogorov Sinai entropies. And this is the end of the lecture. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. The nice talk. It's time for questions. If someone wants to ask here, first from the audience, and then let me check how there is someone else. I will ask questions. Is there anything we can measure? Can you measure anything about uh, kind of an experiment? Yes. Yes. Uh, this experiment um, uh, you will do with computer, I guess. <laughs> okay. Or you will do it with biology. You uh, said, uh, for example, uh, there are uh, models for, for the propagation of the. Yes, that, that's what I want to speak of. The virus, for example, which they use Fibonacci sequences. And here, if you have many, they use uh, single Fibonacci sequence. But if you have various populations, Maybe the propagation of the virus will be different speed. What is the maximum speed that you can reach? The maximum speed you can reach is uh, exponential size because it's flat, it's, it's uh, classical and it's uh, also Newtonian. Uh, and now we can go beyond the speed of light. In Newton, in Newton theory, yeah. Newton, this is Newton, it's not relativistic. It's not a relativistic theory. So the Hamilton and the relativistic theory must be that the time is uh, one variable, not the same as the space. Relativistic theories. Okay. And the time depends on some uh, when part of it moves, space time, and use another value called proper time. Now, the, the coordinate of time space time and the coordinate of space are function of the time. What I'm trying to get at is how quickly can information be passed from one point to another? This is a, a maximum velocity divided by the, this is related with the mixing part of how fast the mixing can be. Yes, how fast can it be? Um, approximately is one over the atomic this is one over the Kolmogorovsky and the which is from a world's entropy, the logarithm is the sum of the lacuna of exponents. Now, the lacuna of exponents is the velocity, essentially, mm -hmm. because exponential p times t, okay, okay, because it's lambda p, this is the propagation. So, lambda p is uh, lambda is some sum of velocity. Now, the point of the lacuna of exponents is uh, you must take one over the, the maximum lacuna of exponents. Now, in Q, it's so the velocity that we have. Is the maximum lacuna of exponent in the system? This is here. And these are the value units. This is 15. Now, depends if you put units into these discrete equations are linear. So you can multiply everything by length, unit of length. 
okay? And then uh, we must use also a unit of time, as I say, and, and plus one, what is this? Uh, I must introduce the time. So depending on the units of left and unit of time, then we can use the diabetic constant to calculate this. Thank you very much. All right. So just, just following on this question, you, you saw the beta parameter, which is one over kappa times T. I understand T is the temperature. Yeah. So what kind of temperatures are we talking about there in this system? The temperature of the, the this, this this formula holds for the black hole. The right. Black hole, if you if, if you think it as a as a dynamical system, it is a temperature, which are all the Hawking temperature. Mm -hmm. And this is one over the mass of the black hole, to the cube. I guess I'm trying to understand that so the temperature is very very big. Right. The black hole then is almost zero. Yeah, yes. Right. But in this case, it's extremely small and can be of um, temperature. Right. But in this case, the scrambling time, because you have a big entropy and you have a small temperature, so a big beta parameter, it becomes very large. So the process is very slow. Right. I mean, you mentioned that this is a fast process and then you have a scrambling time which appears to be large. Yes. yes. So it's a slow process. Then another part is compared with the same. It's sparse to the spark, the mother system with the same temperature. And, uh, okay. And so you take two different systems. Okay. And you find what is the scrambling time for one. The other, all of them know, for example, usually it's diffu through diffusion, okay, there's normalization. There's a question. Okay, so comparatively speaking, it's uh, it's fast. Uh, so I told you that usually the time, mixing time, the scrambling time is a fractional power of the entropy of the system. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then the correlation. The logarithm is logarithm is function which is smaller than any any power of the variable x x to the epsilon. The is x. Okay. And then you mentioned the turbulence and chaos. So my question is in a in a macroscopic turbulence that has a Rayleigh's number and it has a an inertial range and a dissipative uh, range. Where does chaos appear in this situation? I mean, you have dissipation in the dissipative range, so things, information is being lost, dissipated. Yeah, you have an inertia range. Yeah. Yeah. That means Okay, so there, is, there you don't produce. so there is a relation between the Yakulov exponent, which is a diagnostic of chaos, yeah. and the Reynolds number, which is a diagnostic of turbulence. Can you define such a relation between the two? The first I think that it does proportion of the same. I mean, if you start saying you have this point flow and all that stuff, there are uh, cases where you can find some uh, order in a, in a chaotic regime. So it's strongly based on the parameters of, uh, of the experiment, of medical experiment. Right. Yes, I'm trying to do it. Right. There are very large regimes, okay? Very small range. Very large range. There is a very large range for the liquid helium, which is a quantum helium. It's a very small range, for example. And what happens there is that there are some kind of filaments. But uh, they produce in the beginning, during the liquid cell uh, healing. And then uh, you see that uh, uh, when you steer above the critical velocity, then all these filaments, they throw, they, they throw uh, I think, uh, I, iron powder, powder inside. And then with stroboscopic experiments, they look what, what happens yeah. and then they see the filaments but they become more complex and more complex and more complex and they measure somehow the complexity of these filaments they measure the, the production of the, the entropy but it still exists there from the cases we can yes, it's a great guy in 
Anyway, so there is a uh, there is a literature on the problem of using what we know about turbulence uh, for the information on the black hole. Yeah. It will be thing that maybe there is another dynamical mechanism which is a turbulent. Then you have a fury. So the theory the theorists we draw the tools mm -hmm. to, to try to find this maximum. Maximum time. So there is this this maximum scrambling time was proposed by uh, two authors, including Hayden and Preskin. Preskin is a guy who is a guru of quantum computers. And Saskin, who is professor in Stanford later, and they introduced the notion for many statistical, uh, dynamic statistical systems and compare various systems. So he somehow gave indication that this bound indeed cannot be superseded by any, by any other physical system or the black hole. So the claim is that the black hole is the ultimate scramble of the universe <laughs> So it is very catchy words, but uh, although these are qualitative ideas and interesting ideas. Some people later uh, make many models, proposed models which should have this problem, but it has not been proven yet. But uh, they did huge numerical experiments of lattice matrix models. There is one model which is called uh, for short from amorphous materials in solid state, which is called TAEF. They take the time about it. And this model seems to behave like that. That is, if in finite energy, behave like the maximum scrambling. So there is an interesting interaction. I think there must be by now three or four thousand papers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's a big, big topic. It's a big topic in this. This is in, 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 in the effort to understand gravity. So now we go deeper and deeper and understand that we, that really we don't understand even classical gravity. We understand nothing about classical gravity from this respect. Okay? They want to somehow to translate the all physical phenomena into information theoretic language. This is the tendency the last five years. So we try to explain everything in terms of information quantities. For my mind, and for this, for the density matrices, quantum systems, quantum computers, or the, all the dynamical laws of physics um, are supposed to be explained finally by general laws of quantum information theory, somehow it's a particular case of quantum information. So, this even the classical limit, not in the relativistic limit, right? Yes, classical. So there is a huge you know, mix in between elementary public physics, quantum information, and uh, nonlinear systems and chaos theory. Okay, so you have three big areas of science which are different, and now they no, use, not. <laughs> they use, uh, they use uh, tools from all of these, and they have groups of people which are, some of them are specialists in one, and the other, the other. So these are four or five places in the United States where I'm doing now this. So they, they, they hire people from computer science, they hire people from theoretics, quantum physics, and they put them in the same place. They, they give money for research for that. And so you know, they hope that something was the next. I don't know how it's Thank you, Matthias. I want to ask something. I'm, I'm not from the street, but, uh, but I want to ask why you consider a legal company. You uh, have uh, this page, but you have analytical formulas for the approval of exponents and for the tomographs. Uh, what happens if you more linear? Nothing strange happens at all. Simply, you have to do it analytically. Okay. So you have to do numerical experiments, change the parameter, change the parameter, change the parameter. So you have to do another effect, another effect, and you have to do 
the numerical word is um, looks not like that. And after you find something, you don't know why why you found it. Usually numerical experiments are um, very useful to obtain results. But if you don't expect something before you do the okay, so as much as you know analytically, it's much better to understand the results into a method of the So okay. Thing that uh, if you put nonlinear couplings, then uh, you may go faster or you may go slower. Not necessarily. So depending on the coupling, etc. We have not for the moment we have not extended. There are people who have tried to um, couple nonlinear, nonlinear way, other, not other non cut map, but other, uh, for example, the standard map. Who are doing this with standard, they multiply two standard maps, for example, not the sum of standard combination standard maps. They find uh, very, very, these are very sensitive to the parameters, very sensitive. Change very little, but it's completely different. Uh, yeah, yeah. Behavior. They have more health in a way. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. 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 if you uh, start doing the blind information. <laughs> <laughs> it's a master time. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 time but uh, it is true that, uh, as you said, that it's not that you uh, go to the nonlinear coupling and you expect to find something that uh, adds in a uh, way that you can predict. You can find even orders or something in a, in a special coupling. Yeah, okay. It's, that's an issue of chaos. I am the analytical side because I like more mathematics. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, excuse me. There is a question. After all, Stam, I think, wants to ask something. Can you answer? Okay. Stam, go ahead. I was clapping. Uh, well, he was ah, okay, okay, <laughs> clapping. Okay, I thought it was raised hand. Nice to see you anyway. <laughs> Bye. Oops. And and for all and, and meeting for all. Oh.